Thanks for staying with us. The court has reinstated Shaibu as a do deputy governor. That is, uh, Justice James Omotoshaw of the Federal High Court in Abuja reinstated him, that is, Philip Shaibu, as the deputy governor of a do state, voiding his impeachment or removal. The court found that the do state House of Assembly did not follow due process in impeaching Shaibu and declared the allegations against him legally insufficient for gross misconduct. The court ordered the Inspector General of Police to provide security for Shoaibu and mandated that he receive his outstanding salaries and allowances from April 2024. A permanent injunction was issued preventing Governor Godwin Obasiki and the Edo State House of Assembly from interfering with Shoaibu's duties as Deputy Governor. To discuss this with us is Elvis Asia, a legal practitioner. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, help us make sense of this uh, judgment that has been given. He is now back as, according to the, the High Court, is now back as the Deputy Governor of Edo State. So, explain to us what has really happened and what this portends for the politics of Edo. Uh, well, I think the first thing is that I'm not surprised um, at this uh, judgment. Uh, if you look at the process and the way Amanda, the deputy governor, was impeached, it was clear that it was not just political, but it was also, uh, you know, rushed. It was not well thought out. And the allegations that were made on the basis of which he was impeached uh, was clearly not something uh, that can stand the test of time. Um, I, I recall in April when he was impeached, the uh, House leader um, you know, said that the reason why he was impeached was because uh, he leaked official secrets in a, in a, in a, in a, in a affidavit that he filed in court. Um, if you look at the Constitution, Section 188, um, Subsection 11, though the House of Assembly has you know, wide discretion on what constitutes the gross misconduct, Constitution is very clear that first there has to be a misconduct. Then the severity, which is gross, whether it's gross or not, is that is what, uh, the, the discretion that the House of Assembly exercises. So, what is misconduct? Misconduct is an improper, you know, action um, and all of that. Now, how can it be that in a, in a constitutional democracy, a, a person who approaches the court? Who ventilates his um, grievances against his uh, governor or the, or the government of a new state? How can that amount to misconduct at all? Don't talk of gross. Gross is something that, because the, the House of Assembly can decide what amounts to gross. But first, there has to be a misconduct. It cannot be a misconduct for somebody to approach the court to seek redress for whatever uh, he feels, uh, uh, whatever he feels the wrong has been done to him. And so, you know, it was not um, this was something that I feel uh, was going to come to this. As it stands now, the court has clearly, uh, you know, vindicated the Constitution. The court has come to the aid of the Constitution to say that, look, yes, why it is true that under Section 10 of the 1999 Constitution, um, impeachment is not subject to a court's, um, um, you know, the court's review. But that is only if you have complied with the procedure for the removal. In this case, you must demonstrate that there was a misconduct. And the court found that, you know, it cannot be a misconduct for somebody to approach the court. And all of those things you said were secrets or whatever it is, are things that, you, you know, the government should only disclose when asked to do so uh, via the freedom of information, uh, relevant freedom of information uh, legislation. I didn't know that the uh, relevant law. So um, as it stands now, uh, it has been, it has been, it has been restated. But of course, we know that um, you know enforcing the judgment is going to be uh, an issue. Uh, politicians have a way of um, you know flouting uh, the decision of the court. And I also hear now that there has been an appeal. Even though I'm quite um, uh, surprised to hear that because at the time the judgment was read yesterday, it was quite late in the day, and I don't think anybody could have been able to prepare an appeal and then file an application. Uh, unless, of course, they already prepared it uh, before the judgment was read, in which case they anticipated that this was going to uh, happen. Mm -hmm. um, but as it stands now, uh, legally speaking, uh, Phyllis Shai, Honorable Phyllis Shai, who is the Deputy Governor of Edo State, 
and whoever they have, that was appointed uh, mobile marvelous has been clearly uh, you know uh, removed his appointment is deemed not to have happened at all in law uh, but like i said you know they're forcing it in terms of uh, might be a, a challenge because you know i mean to be a deputy governor uh, you must be able to work with your principal which is governor exactly and, uh, the governor is which is which is what I was even going to ask. And now that um, we've seen him be reinstated, how is that going to work with the the current governor? Because we know that there is some form of bad blood between both of them. So how can they work together in a time like this? Well, I don't think they, they can work together politically. I mean, the deputy governor has even expressed his intention to support the APC candidate for the upcoming governorship election negotiated. And, and I'm sure that it's, it makes them very compatible. Uh, mm -hmm. But however, you know, the, the, the relevance of this judgment is that, you know, legally speaking, it remains deputy That means that his entitlement in terms of uh, payment of salaries and whatever it is, uh, you know, it will, it will be paid. And it also means that his security will be restored. It also means that this, you know, the office that he occupies will continue to be uh, guaranteed uh, on the basis of this judgment. But in terms of politically working together, I think that's a different uh, issue entirely. I don't think that is going to be possible. Uh, but this is not the first time this will be happening. If you take your mind back to the ambassador uh, years uh, with his fight with his article, his deputy, deputy president, vice president at that time. It was you know, practically the same thing. Um, the vice president was leaning towards the APC. And uh, the, the president remained uh, a PDP president. And so um, the, the, the school court at that time heard that, that that doesn't change anything. It is only with respect to uh, House of Assembly members, House of Representatives, and you know, all of that, that if you cross carpet, for example, if you leave mm -hmm. a party that to affect your position. So his position as an elected deputy governor remains. But the practicality of working together is a different thing entirely. Um, but he will still be entitled, obviously, to uh, the benefits that accrues uh, to his office. And don't also forget that in under, under our democracy, the position of the deputy governor or the vice president is, is uh, largely solely at the mercy of the of the governor or the president, as the case may be. Uh, there isn't any clear constitutional, um, um, you know, responsibility for the deputy governor. It's 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 you are there actually um, as you know. Uh, to, 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 to you're more like you're on the bench you know, in a football match where you have some players playing and then you have somebody on the bench in the event of injury or you need to make some tactical substitution. Um, you know, so but the relevance of the judgment essentially is that the man uh, is entitled to the benefit of the office, is under the security that comes to the office, and so um, you know um, that is what what it is. But politics obviously uh, they've gone so poor apart at the moment, and I don't think. Uh, they're going to be able to work together. Yeah, but uh, I think um, what Shaibu will be looking for or was looking for was vindication, and he has gotten that. Um, he should be satisfied. And then the, the, the entitlements that come to him, that is, Nigerians will say that's the cuckoo, <laughs> and it will come to him. But that vindication yeah. is very, very uh, key. But now, uh, the, the fact that he's leaning towards an opposition party, the APC, does that not give the PDP... Um, some some leverage to now accuse him legally that he is doing anti-party and so should not be deputy. They can they can remove him afresh. Yeah. Don't you think so? I mean, you see, um, that is the thing. Um, the, the challenge we the, the House personally had in this particular instance was their belief that you know um, anything can be cooked up as a basis for removing a governor or a deputy governor. That is not uh, actually correct under the constitution. Uh, if somebody moves from one party to another, a deputy governor moves from one party to another, it does not amount to gross misconduct for the, for, for, on the basis of which it can be impeached. The Supreme Court has made this very clear in the Articles case, like, 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 like I referenced earlier. The mere fact that you have moved from one party to another doesn't mean that you have, you have, you have, you have, you have there's, there's gross misconduct. Uh, gross misconduct has to be something that you know has to do with breach, grave breach of the Constitution or an improper. Uh, you know, uh, action that is so grave that, you know, I mean, for example, you are deputy governor, you have done something that, you know, that's, that's criminal, you have done something that's against the people and all of that. There has to be something very, you know, clearly, 
not you know something as uh, mundane. I say mundane because of the Nigerian politics of uh, cross carpeting that is uh, happening uh, every day. Uh, so that cannot be the basis for saying that somebody has uh, the deputy governor is guilty uh, of gross misconduct and based on which it should be impeached. Um, there's a clear precedent for that. Um, you know, the only thing is that they will have to live with him uh, throughout the uh, for the remaining part of the, uh, the Obaseki administration, which uh, will terminate in November. Um, you know, because it wouldn't even make sense for them to take another step to impeach the deputy governor. Uh, but again, we also have to understand that they have the right of appeal. Um, you know, there are institutions that they have filed a picture for steel of execution, uh, which means that. Um, the judgment will continue to remain in abeyance until the Court of Appeal uh, decides otherwise. So that, I believe, is more like the angle they are going to take rather than allowing him to uh, enjoy the office and then uh, you know, take another steps um, to try to impeach him. All right, so what's the um, political implication of all of this, especially for the people of Edo State? Because I understand that, okay, this is between the governor and the deputy governor, but at the end of the day, the people of Edo States are the ones who really need, you know, the government to run smoothly. So what's the political implication and how are they going to run this smoothly to ensure that the people of Edo States are represented the way they want to be? Well, first, I think um, the people of Edo State would have they will have to wait till the central election to speak, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to express their uh, position or opinion on what is currently going on in the two states. And quite frankly, I'm from a two states, um, and, and a critical stakeholder at that. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell you for free that, you know, um, the, the, the judgment clearly also, uh, you know, confirms uh, the high handedness, uh, what has come to appear to be. Um, um, you know, the sole administrator mentality of the current government. Uh, Basaki was supported by all of us. Uh, we all uh, fought to ensure that he got his second time after he, we felt out he was unjustly treated uh, by the APC and the Godfathers uh, by the politics at the time. But unfortunately, um, you know, in the second term, he has uh, demonstrated uh, that he's not so different from uh, the people that we. Uh, fought to uh, get him uh, on board for the second for the second time. So uh, the people of the district, I believe, uh, would have you know, I mean, there's already a great disenchantment with his government, and that's going to count on the government that um, his uh, favorite candidate, uh, Mr. Aswedo Bodan, uh, will fare in the election. And so the people I want to believe are watching very critically. Uh, as much as nobody really uh, is in support of any of, any of them, whether it's Philip Shaibu or Basaki at, at the moment, but the way uh, they have gone about the process of impeachment just shows that, uh, you know, no critical thinking went to it. How do you say you want to impeach a deputy government because he filed an action in court? That is, um, you know, uh, really not uh, something that's practical. And we have seen the way Amanda the government has it's been run concurrently. And the people feel that uh, it's not really in touch with, with them. And so uh, the politics of those states uh, in the next couple of months will really clearly show uh, where the people stand on, on all of these issues. And in my personal paper, I think um, this is going to count against uh, the PDP, uh, their candidates. Um, there are other actions that the government has taken uh, in this similar faction. You, you recall that uh, for, you know, throughout the uh, Large part of the first term, there was no uh, as for assembly uh, because the governor uh, muzzled it up. And we have of this same uh, Fidishaibu, they practically emasculated, crippled, and pocketed the House of Assembly. And the House of Assembly became uh, a rubber stamp for whatever it is that they wanted. And so, uh, this is not the kind of uh, leadership that is required uh, for people for a people to develop. For, 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 for the people uh, to feel the part of governance, they must be carried along. And there must be, uh, you know, uh, regards, due regards for the rule of law. There must be regards for, you know, uh, decency. You cannot go on like a like a bandit, um, you know, in running the affairs of, of, of the state. And you know, don't forget that Edo is a very uh, you know, democratic state, uh, state. And just like we all came out in mass uh, to fight to ensure that the current government uh, remains in power. 
I'm very sure that all of these developments will perhaps uh, move the people to also fight again because we are always on the side of justice in the state. Okay. Uh, well, um, this is where we have to drop it today. We'd like to thank you, um, Barista Elvis Asia, for coming on the program and sharing your thoughts. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. We'll be talking with uh, Barista Elvis Asia, legal practitioner. He was talking to us from Lagos here, but he is from a do state. Up next, uh, we'll be taking a second hot topic, and this will be uh, that the South is skeptical about student loan scheme. Stay with us.